The F-16 are soon coming to Ukraine, but they're useless. And it's not me saying, but a high-ranking Ukrainian official. I really don't understand. So there was an article where an unnamed senior Ukrainian official said that the F-16 were going to be useful last year, presumably during the offensive, but today they're not particularly relevant. So in this video I will try to understand why the Ukrainian high command may think so. Because right now, after all the political capital spent to create the coalition that is supplying the aircraft, if this was true, it would be a cosmic disaster. We already discussed the facts related to the F-16 for Ukraine, and the link to that video is at the end of this video. But anyway, I decided to watch that video again. It was almost a year ago, but I think that the core message is still valid. There we made clear that the challenge is not the aircraft itself, nor it is the pilot training. The challenge is building a westernized air force in the middle of a high-intensity war. During World War II, all the major participants evolved their forces at a breakneck pace. Today the complexity is such that the same feat is an order of magnitude more difficult. Just for comparison, consider the Polish Air Force. From the beginning of the training of the first pilots and ground crews on the F-16 to being fully operational, it took almost 10 years. Sure, during a war you will cut some corners, but a few months are not feasible. And even two years, that seems to be now the agreed timeline, more or less, it is too short. My original concern was that the only way around was to use Western personnel whose status was changed to be Ukrainian in somehow. The civilian contractors who are needed by all the air forces who fly the F-16 would likely not have accepted to work inside Ukraine, so the aircraft would have to fly in and out of Ukraine. This would carry a huge risk of escalation, but luckily this doesn't seem to be the way they have chosen to go. However, there are news that a dozen Ukrainian pilots have almost completed their training and they may be ready for May 2024 which means that a small number of F-16 may become operational in the summer of 2024. The bulk of the aircraft and equipment will be received by Ukraine and probably deployed in 2025. Yes, because a good number of the pilots chosen by Ukraine to be trained on the F-16 were not experienced pilots. They were young pilots who still needed basic training, something that may take many years in peace time. So all of this is well and good, but it doesn't explain what these officials had in mind when saying that the aircraft are not relevant. After all, the final number of aircraft that Ukraine is going to get is probably between 80 and 90, more than twice the number of aircraft that seemed to be available one year ago when I made the first video. As I said, not all the aircraft are going to arrive straight away. The first ones are six units just released by Denmark. Belgium in the meanwhile has agreed to join in and donate its own aircraft, something that it refused to do at the beginning. The Netherlands is giving six more aircraft and other countries have allocated a larger percentage of their available units. And the donors will be Norway, Denmark, the Netherlands and Belgium. For a short while, it seemed that Greece, who is trying to reduce the excessive variety of its fleet, could provide F-16s and Mirage 2000. Just a few days ago, though, this was denied by the Greek Minister of Defense. And this is not everything. The Ukrainians are eagerly working on the logistics and the infrastructure. For example, the well-known problem of the runways. It seems that the bases will be in western Ukraine, but since the Ukrainians have no tankers, the aircraft will need staging bases closer to the line of combat. So all these bases will need works to extend the runways and improve the pavement, since the F-16 is considered to be quite sensitive to the quality and the cleanliness of the ground surface. 
problem is this will clearly indicate to the Russians where the F-16s are going to operate. Some measures of concealment will likely be necessary. And by the way, the news that the US, through intermediaries, bought 81 old Soviet aircraft from Kazakhstan is less relevant than it seems. These are very old aircraft that have been already cannibalized for parts, so there is probably not much useful remaining. Some propose that they can be used as decoys on airfields, uh, but, well, this is it. So after doing all this research, I still didn't know why the Ukrainian top brass think that the F-16s are not relevant. So, well, I made a phone call. <laughs> I really can't tell you who was on the other side of the phone. Let's call him, or her, the wise hermit on the top of the mountain. The wise hermit on the top of the mountain, so listen to my perplexities and answer with just one sentence. Remember the Leopard Scouts. Excuse me, sir. I am slightly concerned about the direction this video is taking. No worries, Otis. I know what I'm doing, okay? The last time you said so, the toilet exploded, sir. Uh, that was just a moderate overflow, okay? Do you realize what it looked like seen from my point of view, sir? Uh, Otis, okay, n never mind, okay? L let me go on, please. So, one possibility is that this is all posture it is not true and they are eagerly waiting for the jets after all they are working on it if it wasn't important they wouldn't and that's a pretty reasonable explanation but the wise hermit on the mountain did not suggest that another thing that he or she did not suggest was to look at Zelensky's begging to get more ground-based air defenses. This was vehemently advocated in the past weeks and months, and so we may deduct that the Ukrainians believe that the ground-based air defenses are more important than the aircraft when it comes to defending the airspace. There may be truth in this, particularly considering the nature of this war, but the aircraft are definitely more flexible. You can do a lot more with aircraft, albeit that operating environment is going to be very, very contested. But the wise hermit said something different, and I couldn't wrap my head around it when, finally, opening the fridge like it often happens, I realized what the hermit was talking about. Do you remember when there was that story about the leopards and the minefields, when the German instructor told Ukrainian trainee to go around minefields not knowing that in Ukraine there was an, an uninterrupted belt of mines? Do you remember when some classified German reports were leaked complaining that Ukrainians did not know how to employ movement tactics? These are all faces of the same medal. NATO forces have a limited understanding of the conditions in Ukraine, so NATO training and equipment has shown its limitations in Ukraine. Could it be the same issue with the F-16s? When the decision of providing F-16 was originally taken, the Ukrainian attitude was just teach us where the switches are and we're good to go. It soon became clear that a more comprehensive approach was required. While an expert pilot can learn how to safely fly the aircraft in a few months if necessary, actually qualifying to use the weapons and fly different types of missions with different tactics, it is a long process that may take years. And many Ukrainian pilots assigned to the program were not even expert pilots. However, it is very likely that Ukrainian pilots are being taught to operate within a NATO environment characterized by the presence of NATO assets. Moreover, they are probably being taught mission planning according to NATO style, which is quite different from the ex-Soviet style used in Ukraine. The Russians have progressively moved away from the typical centralized style that they used to have, but the Ukrainians were still a little behind the curve. Surely they have learned a lot of lessons during the war, and some of them may fly in the face of what the pilots are being taught during the NATO training. In particular, if they are being taught to be part of a typical NATO package, which usually comes from very distant and safe bases, it uses in-flight refueling and it is designed to conduct 
conduct well-organized time-on-target operations against air defenses or ground targets, well, that is not what they are going to find in Ukraine. They will have to conduct small isolated missions, two or four ships at most, against specific targets on the line of contact, trying to evade the Russian air defenses. In case of air to air, they may need to organize ambushes against the Russian combat air patrols that will likely still have a range and technology advantage. Smaller than before, because the F 16 is surely a worse customer than the old Soviet aircraft, but the gap with the Su 30 and the Su 35 is still there. And if we consider the MiG 31, well, it is the MiG-31. Moreover, they will have to scramble to try intercepting cruise missiles and drones, probably with limited intelligence of where to find them. A mission where radar performance and quick execution are essential. So, I'm not saying this is the case, this is speculative on my part, but since this happened before, I believe the doubt is legitimate. So, what do you think? Please, let me know in the comments below. So thank you very much for watching this video and an enormous thank you to all those who are already supporting the channel or Patreon by being a member or by one-off donations. You are absolutely essential to this operation and you will be even more essential in the next future considering what is to come. And if you're not supporting the channel yet, please, if you can, consider supporting the channel because the supporters have access to me, but also have uh, the possibility to see the sources that I'm using for the videos, the additional material that I produce, and sometimes there are just videos reserved for the supporters that show the backstage of this channel. So, thank you very, 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 very much for watching and see you next time.